Pleasure to welcome to the show the great Gary St. Jean. How are you today, Coach? I'm terrific now that I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Saint, thanks, thanks for your time. You know, Mike Brown, as we said, uh, he's going to join this exclusive club, guys who coach the Kings in the postseason. What has impressed you the most about the job that Mike Brown has done this year? Well, I've had the privilege to know him since he was down there with Pop. And uh, nothing's changed in terms of the person. He is an absolute gem. Uh, smile ear to ear. Great communication skills upbeat attitude you know guys get labeled as coaches and uh, everyone said he was a defensive guy well look at your team now and it's a high-powered offense and he spent some great years with Steve Kerr and you know he's uh you're just happy for him he, he's going to get the coach of the year and he'll deflect all the praise to the players and his assistants but uh he's changed the culture and uh, I know that Vivek and the entire organization are thrilled with his job. And I, I just couldn't be happy, more happy for him. How's it going, Coach? Uh, I don't know how much uh, of Kings basketball you've watched this season, but at, at, at what point in the year did you kind of realize that Mike Brown was starting to really turn things around this year? Well, after a tough start, uh, they got things going. And then I have to admit something to you. I, I, my wife, MJ, said to me, are you going to keep getting the NBA package? <laughs> and I, and I kind of smiled and I said, well, I, I got to watch Dallas because my son's yeah, coaching right. down there with Jason Kidd. Yeah. And I said, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing some radio stuff for the Warriors, so I got to stay on top of them. But quietly, I'm going to tell both of you guys that I watched the Kings every single chance I got, oh, I and I love the way they're playing. Love that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Gary St. Jean, our guest here with Whitey and Watkins. It's great to talk with you again, Coach. In what ways would you say Sabonis and Draymond's roles uh, are, are similar uh, this season with their teams, a hub of the offense, similar offense, and in what ways are the roles uh, maybe a little different in your mind? Well, Whitey, it's a heck of a comparison because – you show me a player who can pass, he can play. And you know who taught me that? Coach Pete Carrill. Wow. And uh, he, he knew a player when he saw him pass and he could read a play. That guy had a basketball IQ. And the, both of them have a huge basketball IQ. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing with Sabonis that you can run him in the low post and uh, he can score down there, obviously, much more effectively than Draymond. But you can run the same split action that both teams run. You can run him up at the elbow. And they both teams like to run splits off of there where your guards X, they cross off of them. And you can run them as trailers on your fast break. They can chain sides of the floor. They can get into dribble handoffs. They can get into pass and picks. But they see things two counts quicker than 99% of the bigs in the NBA. And uh, I, I'm a big fan of both of theirs. Sabonis so obviously is a better rebounder and a better scorer. Uh, Draymond's got those two shooters, those two guys that aren't too bad, you know, that are they're, they're going to someday go back to my neck of the woods, back to the Hall of Fame. Springfield, <laughs> but uh, I love talking about those two because they, they play the game the right way. Coach, in the last segment, me and Whitey were just talking about uh, a couple different teams that have found some success in the postseason despite not having good defense during the regular season. Do you feel like the Kings need to kind of change, have a bigger commitment on the defensive end if they want to find success this postseason? Well, it's you know what, Chris, it's kind of hard to flip the switch. You know, you don't want to make dramatic change and say you're going to match up. The big thing that goes on now with the coaches is the preparation. And they're looking at the games they played against them, maybe evaluating the last seven to ten games that they each played. And you're looking what was good for you during the regular season. And uh, you on both ends of the floor. And I think where the Kings – uh, it's going to be big for them is rebounding. And you've got one of the best in the entire league 
Now you have to what we call gang rebound. Yeah. And the Warriors have gotten away with this with a small lineup with Looney and Green and sometimes only one of those guys on the floor. But you got a lot of guys getting three or four. And keep in mind, long shots create long rebounds. Mm-hmm. So your guards can't leak out. Everybody's got to come back and rebound. And then you get rewarded with possession of the ball and you and you get in the open floor and you get early offense opportunities, which both teams are superb at. Gary St. Jean with us here on the Sackdown Sports Playoff Push. Coach, if you were, um, well, what do you think Steve Kerr is most worried about here of these three things? We know the words are the defending champs, but they've got a poor road record uh, this year. They got the high turnover rate again, and they got this disparity between free throws taken and free throws allowed. Is there one of those three things that you think is probably a little more concerning to Steve than the others? No, I don't know because I got to share with you that speech has been going on since uh, mid October and uh, they're, they're foul committing. That's why it's so important that Fox keep attacking Uh because they don't keep the ball in front of them. Mm -hmm. Now he may not get all the way to the rack and we all know how effective he is in the fourth quarter, Mm -hmm. but to get to that mid range that he has, or he get touches the paint where he kicks it out to a Murray or a Barnes or a, uh, Oh, help me. Monk, Who else? Monk, Herder. Monk, Herder. Monk, Herder. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, guys, I think it's really important that you touch the paint mm-hmm. and he is the key guy. And I think that I'll touch on this after, but I think the two key guys for each team are monk and pool. Uh, and I'm going to say that because they're young and they're inconsistent, and when they play well, their teams are really uh, in a position to win. Coach, how do you feel the uh, the return of Andrew Wiggins impacts your feelings about the not just in this series, but the Warriors' potential this entire postseason? And how much do they really need from him, realistically? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you guys, I don't know if I would make them a favorite against the Kings without him. Mm. Uh, that's how much, we, and listen, you two guys and myself and all the listeners know all about the cowbells <laughs> and there is nobody, nobody, maybe Steve Kerr, he's the only one. And I used to get complaints from the other coaches because the guys down by the other bench, the visitor's bench would ring those things during the timeout. And I remember Phil Jackson saying to me, this is ridiculous. <laughs> they can't be doing this. My players can't hear me. And I'm down the other end. And I'm cheering them on. Ring them louder. Ring them louder. So they think they've got fabulous fans down here. The Kings fans are every bit as good or better. And uh, so I, I don't know. Fellas, I can go back to that year when we were the first Sacramento team to get into playoffs. And I'm sitting in the coach's office, and I know the guys are going to get a standing ovation. So out they go. Mitch leads them out. And this cheer starts. But then it, 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 the, the noise kept going for 20 minutes. And I had to go back out there and take a look to believe this. Standing ovation for the entire warm-up. Wow. Do not be surprised if that happens Saturday. Wow. Uh, that, that, that's how much I, that's how much I love the Kings fans guys. I came back for the two Dallas fans, Dallas games right at new year's. Uh-huh. And it was my son, Greg's birthday and MJ and I came up and, you know, and for us to see all the old uh, ushers and the people there, it, it, it's just tremendous. And the fans, and they let me ring that big bell out there. <laughs> and I got a big bang out of that. And I sat with Vivek. And I looked around and I, and I just, it just felt like old times. It was, it was fabulous. And uh, so, uh, you know, there's all these other series and great matchups and all that kind of thing. It's not even close, not even close. This is the best matchup in the whole first round. Yeah. That's a great story saying, and you had a lot to do with laying that foundation for all this. I got one more for you and we've been throwing this out today, having some fun with this and you have been a long time student of the game. We're getting some interesting answers who was your favorite, your first 
favorite basketball player? I'm guessing it was probably somebody with oh. the Celtics, but I don't know. Gary St. Jean's no. very first favorite basketball player. You know how the young kids today are uh, the in vogue thing is wearing those retro Converse yeah. shoes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So growing up in Massachusetts, the, the Converse plant was in Malden, Mass., which is just outside of Boston. Now, I don't know the story why, but you know that they wore black, black Converse. And, uh, of course, the low cuts uh, on number six from Oakland, oh. Massachusetts, uh -huh. from USF, two-time Olympic champ, uh, William Felton oh, yeah. Russell. Yeah. That there was you know. my man. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, him, Bob Cousy, I, I'm going way back, Bill Sharman, Tommy Heinsohn, and then came John Havlicek. And uh, so I was around a lot of winning. What, 11, 11 championships? Yeah. And of course, Russ it's also, uh, yeah, up. also coached the Kings and was a GM That's too. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Saint, yeah, you're Russ, the best. I yeah. uh, really, really appreciate your time. Great catching up with you. And thank you for your keen insight into this series. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, I gave you a lot of history stories, but I didn't give you a lot of insight. So <laughs> call anytime during the series and we can break it down more. Great. Sounds Appreciate good. that. Match we will say guys, the matchups, watch the matchups. That's the whole key to this stuff. Great. Who's matched up on who? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Saint. We, we definitely okay, will take guys. you up on that. We appreciate it. Appreciate it, coach. Take care. Uh, the great Gary St. Jean, all guests come to you from the Folsom Lake Honda hotline, Folsom Lake Honda, their one-stop Honda shop. Isn't he kind of like I told you he was? Yes. <laughs> great. <laughs> definitely has a pep in his step. And I should we should have guessed Bill Russell as his favorite player. That's that's such an obvious great call. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, um, all right. Coming up next year from coaching jobs to LeBron's legacy. What is really at stake in these play-in mm -hmm. games? That's next. Sackdown Sports Playoff Push. Sackdown Sports. SackdownSports.com.